Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Curl Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode I'm going to start off with trying to fulfill the two satellite contracts we have here. Position a satellite in an equatorial orbit of the moon and then also conduct an orbital survey of Minmus with a materials study. And these are convenient because the one that requires a satellite around the moon just wants uh, antenna can generate power and wants a materials bay. And it just wants a materials bay placed in that orbit. It doesn't say that we have to run the experiment. The one around Minmus, however, wants us to run the experiment from high orbit above Minmus. And so we'll go to the moon, we'll run, uh, we'll get into that orbit, and then we'll leave the moon, head to Minmus, and actually do the experiment at Minmus. And I hope to bring this back because, of course, the materials study, you get most of your science if you bring it back. So we have a heat shield, we have a parachute, and we also have these fire ant engines, which are basically the ant but radial mounted. And so those will help us, you know, uh, control the vessel, especially uh, when we dump this stage, which should do most of the work. This is the LV-909 stage. And so this will finish orbit, take us to the moon, transfer us to Minmus, and actually probably bring us back home. Probably we don't even need the fuel up here, but it's fine because we're going to be bringing the fuel back and bringing the engines back, hopefully, right? So uh, we've got solar panels, we've got batteries, as you can see. I'm hoping that everything is well in the confines of the heat shield, though, you know, the Science Junior itself is really tight in there. As far as heat shield selection is concerned, we don't really have much of a choice. We have a smaller one than this one. We have the procedural heat shield, though I'm not entirely sure I trust it with everything. And also, if uh, it is configured properly, it shouldn't be able to expand wider than this anyway, because that's the biggest heat shield we have. The procedural parts should be limited, just as the, the rest of the parts are in the tech tree. Okay, so we have the Athens launcher here, and we are going to try and land it once again on the, on the peninsula to the east. So that is the plan. We are not going to bring it back all the way to the KSC. That would be a waste. We can try and land it over there. We've got the parachutes, we've got uh, the controller at the bottom and the heat shield and batteries and everything. So yeah, we will try and recover it. So I'm not going to use KOS because that would be too complicated. I'm just going to manually try and control it and bring it back. Now I do intend to do the flag on the moon mission in this episode as well with Val, but I want to finish off these two contracts first since they seem pretty straightforward. Uh, let's hope for the best on that one. Alright, throttle is up, SAS is on. We will reserve some fuel from this stage in order to make a safe landing, but we'll have to see. It will mostly depend on what kind of slope we encounter on the eastern peninsula. Alright, so here we go. Okay, very convincing launch. Hand over to Smart ASS. And again, the fuel gauges will read incorrectly because of the way fuel is being drawn from the center tank. Alright, everything appears to be going well. Smart ASS is having no problems now. Mm, oh, it's having a little bit of a problem. not quite hitting the mark here. You can see it wiggling a little bit, but at least it's wiggling in the pitch axis and not wiggling sideways. Sideways is bad. Okay, and of course we don't want to go too far beyond the eastern peninsula, otherwise it'll be tough for this to slow down. Well, that's pretty far already. Okay, um, I'll call it there. Alright. Everything seems to be correct. Separation. And ignition. Alright, let's finish up this orbit. I'll need to pitch down in order to control it. Alright, I action group the lights, uh, the solar panels to the lights, so... There we go. Just trying to get into orbit. Uh, I guess I'll take a high apoapsis. There we go. That's fine. 
Just wanted to quickly get into orbit. Let's jump back to the other portion of the mission, if we can. We'll be coming down pretty fast, so hopefully we'll use some of the engine power to slow that. Just catching the bottom tip of the eastern peninsula there. Now once we unlock the Werner thrusters, it should be easier to control it. I mean, especially on touchdown to make sure that it doesn't tip over. The Werner thrusters can help keep it upright. Right now all we have is a reaction wheel and a small one at that. Okay, there's the target landmass. Let's go like this. I'm gonna make absolutely sure that we actually stay over the continent. Let's save the rest for touchdown. I don't know. I don't want to go into the water actually. Might be safer, but there's a ridge here. Okay, here we go with the heating. We're not going that fast now. We also don't have air brakes. That's something else that would help. Hope the parachutes are sorted out right. Okay, well, both sets seem to be alright, so let's do those first. wonder why both sets would be alright. Oh, we've only got one drogue shoot. I keep messing up with that. I need to fix that. But it seems like a high speed for... Real shoots used to be really strict about this stuff. Now it seems like they can take much higher speeds. So I don't entirely get it. But I need to fix the one drogue shoot thing. That was part of the subassembly was the problem. And I just picked up the subassembly. Okay, let's slow down just a little bit more. And there is some slope. Yeah. Uh... Well, mostly intact. Um, seems like one engine pod. Pretty solid. Not great though. Oh, oh, let's recover it before anything else explodes. Jeez. Okay, and parts. Uh, we got 19,000 funds back, so that's nice. 80% of the total value. Probably there's still a few parts hanging around there, but uh, this is the main thing with the six swivel engines. So, all right, let's get back to the mission. Now our target orbit is, I think it was like 230 or something, um, 220, 220. So here we've got a moon periapsis of 182, we can stop it at 220 once we see that, so this should be a fine transfer. Okay, here we go. Okay, so 220 will do. Just so we don't have to boost it out again. 223. 221. That's, that should be close enough. Alright. Okay. Hopefully it's suitably equatorial. Looks like it will be, but we'll correct that. That shouldn't be too hard. Okay, 863 meters per second left, plenty enough to circularize around the moon and then continue on to Minmus. Unfortunately, we can't uh, get the benefit of the boost from the moon because we actually have to get into orbit around the moon first. But anyway, let's get some sunlight first, make sure that we recharge. Yeah, we're re recharging just fine. Now these little panels don't turn to face the sun or anything, so gotta keep an eye on that. They're nice and small though. Okay, so are we equatorial? Yeah, pretty much. It's not showing me the target orbit though, and that's annoying. I mean, shouldn't it be showing me like, here, this is your your required orbit. 
the contract orbit, position a satellite in equatorial orbit around the moon. I mean, it should show me the contract orbit, right? Inclination zero degrees. I don't know. All right. Well, anyway, let's get into the orbit, and hopefully everything will be all right. Okay, here we go. I see a little dot next to the sun there, and I'm wondering whether that's Minmus. I think it's too small to be Kerbin. Hmm. You see that little dot there? Anyway, we need to go. We do have a one degree inclination, it looks like. But is this close enough? Yeah, it's, like, it's accepting this orbit. I just need to maintain stability. There we go. Contract fulfilled. We got 96,000 funds. I mean, it says pounds. I don't know why it says pounds. But it's funds. And we've got some science. And actually, all the symbols are messed up, aren't they? Um, it should be this science symbol here. And actually, it should be uh, this fun symbol here. But here, it has pounds. It has the copyright symbol. And I don't know what that symbol is. But I suppose that's supposed to be our prestige. But, okay, uh, on to Minmus. So let's plot a Minmus transfer. Uh, so instead of doing a backwards burn to get back to Kerbin, we're actually going to push out. It doesn't matter what kind of uh, encounter we have with Minmus, as long as we get an encounter with Minmus. Because it just wants a high, high approach to Minmus is all. I guess we'll just have to wait once we get uh, an escape trajectory away from the moon. We could wait with the moon, but that hardly matters. Okay, so we'll have this sort of orbit going out, and then we'll have to wait a bit. Okay, we are now in Kerbin space. And actually, yeah, this is interesting. Uh, we could... Oops, sorry. Uh, we could loop around and then uh, hit the moon again, and that would bring us into a nice tight orbit around Kerbin, which would be handy, but then we would not have a Minmus encounter, so that's not so handy. All right, let's just turn so that we can recharge as a first priority. Okay, so an apoapsis burn will do the trick, and it'll also make sure that we do not hit the moon again. That would be helpful. Yeah, uh, 568 kilometer periapsis at Minmus. It wanted a high reading above Minmus, so that should be enough. Of course, I didn't adjust inclination at all to match Minmus's. I'm just hitting it at one of the nodes, so you can see my inclination is very different from Minmus's, but I'm not correcting it at all relative inclination 6 degrees. Okay, we do not need to get into orbit. In fact, we should be able to do the thing here. Material study from high orbit above Minmus. I don't know if we have to get into orbit or it just means high over Minmus. Uh, well, I guess I'll risk it. Observe materials bay. At least we'll get the science. Um, I guess we want to keep it rather than transmit it, huh? Yeah, we'll keep it. We will bring it back, and then hopefully it'll be fulfilled. So let's just... Yeah, I mean, it says high over Minmus, right? Let's just review data. In space, high over Minmus. Okay, keep. We'll head back out, and then we will aim for a return to Kerbin. Okay, 26.5 kilometers. That should definitely bring us down. And no weird encounters. Okay, so the other thing to do is to make sure that the soul panels are facing the right way. Okay, and we should be all set. So as expected, I didn't really need the fuel up here, but that was just an emergency thing. Interesting little colors going on there. I wonder what the science junior actually has in store. What did it actually say? 
High radiation environment caused a few of the samples to glow. Looks like it'd be fun to paint rockets with this. Wow. It looks like they've got all the colors of the spectrum kind of thing going on there. Well, not all of them really, but uh, lots of colors to paint rockets with. Okay. Proceeding back to Kerbin. We will use the remainder of the fuel to slow down. No point not doing so. This isn't a test. This is, you know, a full-fledged mission. We're not testing anything in particular this time. I'm just trying to bring the stuff back safely. Alright, so let's start working on that. Make sure our periapsis does not go down. See, it's trying to go down there. Okay, it's pretty close to 26 kilometers. We ran out of fuel here. Okay, let's make sure everything is okay. Sep. And there it is. The probe we're going to try and recover. Uh, we will ignite these engines. We could use this fuel to slow down too. Uh, we're pretty tight in already. We're within the orbit of the moon now. So we'll reserve it for when we actually hit the atmosphere. Just in case. Looks like we will be landing in daylight. That's nice. Only peril I'm worried about right now is either the heat or the mountains. Okay, camera. Hold on there. There's some mountains over there. So these thrusters are positioned so that we can slow down with them if necessary. We are coming in pretty fast. They're not very good in the lower atmosphere though. First sign of overheating and I'll light the engines. Okay, as far as the blader is concerned, it's taking off less and less, so we seem to be through the worst of it. Yeah, I'd say it's looking pretty good right now. High g-forces, but not that high actually. Between 3 and 4 right now. Yep, all good. Not much of later use, but we'll recover the rest. We did have to use a little bit more fuel to get the ablature to all those places, but better safe than sorry in this case. Getting ready for parachute deployment. We'll probably have to dump the fuel in order to make the thing lighter. We've only got one of these parachutes and we've got 1.2 tons. Well, it says the parachute's safe, but I'm gonna go by normal stock standards and wait till about 260 meters per second. We're actually still pretty high, aren't we? Very white fluffy clouds right now. Extremely bright. Quite an idyllic scene here. That's full parachute deployment. Brings us to... 6.4 meters per second. Okay, SAS. Okay. Alright, well, there we go. Mild slope, recover vessel. Okay, so 78.5 science earned, but mainly we're interested in the contract. We didn't get much for the return of the parts because we were so far away from the KSC. Um, contracts. Yeah, conduct an orbital survey of Minmus fulfilled. So all we have left as far as existing contracts is plant a flag on the moon. Anything else we can do at the same time? It says build a surface outpost on the moon. Land your outpost on the moon. Antenna docking port can generate power. Support at least five Kerbals. Seems like a pretty tall order, huh? It's giving us 14 years to do it though. The penalties aren't too bad. Nope. But I guess we should take that. We've got seven contracts 
available. Conduct a survey of magnetic field environments? Uh, nah. Not right now. Extract ore from the moon and deliver it to Kerbin. 950 units is quite a lot, actually. Again, the the penalty doesn't seem to be that 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 bad, though. Okay, we'll pick it up. I don't need to do another specific satellite around the moon. Rescue Alton Kerbin, Kerman from the surface of the moon. So, should we send Val plus uh, space for Alton? Actually, before I spend the time building what might be an inferior craft, I might as well pick up some more some more research here. Um, we can certainly use the better landing struts and possibly the bigger heat shield. But really, I just want the landing struts from here. I'll research it. Uh, as far as engines and such, we've got the Poodle. God, I don't recognize that. And the Skipper there. And uh, some big tanks. So that would be for making bigger rockets. Other possibilities... We could get uh, procedural fairings upgrade. That says allows fairing and plates to be made as small as 0.4 meters. So uh, it's actually more for the small probes. And then we've got a docking port which will allow for some rudimentary... Well, that could make for an interesting mission, but also rudimentary stations. Well, I think I'll just go for the engines. It is the Kerbal thing to do, and we'll also have these Carbonite engines, though they have a very low ISP as well. Alright everyone, I think it's safe to say that I'm not taking any chances with this mission. I've decided not to send Val, if she had her chance. I think we will just have Alton do the plan of flag. Alton is the Kerbal we are trying to save, and I've decided to name the rocket after him, because it's all about him, really. And so, we've got a pod. We've got supplies in a service bay and then a heat shield and then over here is the landing and launch module. Actually this won't do much on landing, it's really to get out and off of the surface and back to Kerbin. But uh, yeah, it'll finish off the landing obviously, that's why the landing legs are here and this is a rear guard engine. This is the LV-909 stage somewhere in there. And uh, we've got extra solar panels here because there's a shroud over this thing and those solar panels won't be able to pop out when, uh, when we need them. So I decided to uh, put a fairing around them. Probably not necessary, as just for show. Annoyingly though, the inner stage, the fairing inner stage, has a max diameter of 1.5 meters right now, even though I can make the tanks up to 3 meters wide. So that's a weird mismatch. And that's why I've had to make this sort of bulky thing instead of making everything smoother. Uh, once we get the upgrade to those interstage fairings, things will look a lot better. But, uh, yep, and then, so LV-909, and then a poodle, and then a skipper, and then boosters. So lots of stuff going on here. Pretty expensive, but uh, once we get the plant of flag done and rescue Alton, we will get plenty of funds back for this. Also, I've put parachutes on these boosters. I don't know if these are big enough to really recover these. We're going to find out. Uh, well, it says, stage recovery says 5.1 meters per second, 100% recovery. I've also put parachutes on the skipper stage, though I think those will, that will probably burn up before stage recovery gets, a, get, gets its hands on it. But we'll see. Um, the skipper stage plus the boosters don't really get us all the way to orbit. We need the poodle for that. And so the Poodle does start out with a 1.0 thrust to weight ratio, uh, just to make sure that I can handle that. And so, yeah, let me just do some fine tuning about the staging, and we'll be on our way. And of course, we will not have any Kerbal inside the capsule. We have the probe core in the service bay with the supplies. As far as supplies are concerned, I've put four days of supplies in. And of course, we've got 30 days of habitation. Um, so, yeah. That is hopefully going to be good enough. We will find out. Okay, here we go. I've got the mod propellant in. Really didn't need that, but I guess we'll just go with it. Throttle up, SAS is on. And, uh, well, I don't know if I need fins or not. Uh, I don't know how the stability of this will go. We're about to find out. Alright, let's go.
definite acceleration adding off to smart ASS whoa 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 no 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 ah uh, okay maybe I need fins oh great um okay hold on oh there's no controller on the other side shoot well uh let me just uh, deploy shoot there uh, and I've got two auxiliary shoots. Um, this is still going on like this. I should have put a controller on, then I could have done something about it. Now I can't uh, eject the boosters. They could probably save themselves. They've got those parachutes and everything. Can't do anything about that now, though. Ah, well, this piece is fine. That much we will recover. The rest, not so much. I think. I don't know. Stage recovery hasn't act exactly told me anything yet. Okay, recover vessel. But that's not most of the value of this craft. Most of the value was was in the lower stages. Okay, well, um, eight thousand funds recovered. How much was the total? Fifty-one thousand. So not great. But anyway, we know what we need to do. Now the fins are gonna compl Well, we just gotta let stage recovery handle it. But the uh, fins obviously not a great thing for recovering the skipper stage. Do we have wing strakes as well? We have this structural wing type C but not the wing strakes. Wing strakes are apparently higher technology than structural wing type C even though they're the same shape just tilted. Um, can I just like put it on like this? Okay, well, uh, let's hope we don't... Oh, I should have put a controller on, but then again... Uh, I don't know. Well, let's just hope it works out right. Throttle up, SAS on, and go. Well, it seems better controlled with Smart ASS this time. Let's hope it stays that way. We're going pretty high in the pitch this time. Okay, set. Boosters are away. And uh, we'll await any message about their recovery, I'm not sure. Probably with the previous one, we were still in physics range. So stage recovery wasn't able to handle it. We probably have to be out of physics range for stage recovery to actually deal with the stage. Well, this is marginally a more expensive stage now with the fins, so I hope we can recover it. Okay, very good. Separation. And the poodle. Which, of course, we made sure had a good TWR, so let's add some pitch so that we're not going down too much. That'll do the trick. Now, the skipper stage wasn't going too fast. I mean, 1,800 in orbit. What's the surface? Well, 1,600 surface velocity. I don't know if uh, stage recovery can handle that. Um, stage recovery did recover the boosters. Uh, 2,300 back for those. Radial, radial decoupler. Actually, the... Parachute and the radial decoupler are worth more than the booster itself. <laughs> oh, that's weird. That is weird. Okay. Well, at least we got back. Making a somewhat lopsided orbit here. I'll be fine. I did not action group the soul panels to L this time. And these do not retract, mind you. So, we're going to have to watch out for that. They do track the sun, though.
Okay, well, uh, actually, there's the moon, so in theory, we should be able to just point prograde and continue on, right? I think that should be doable, and that'll be ideal, because uh, the high apoapsis we had was on the side that's gonna hit the moon. So that'll be convenient. Well, I hope uh, Alton is in some convenient location on the moon. Um, uh, he's there, Alton's craft. Uh, well, not very convenient, actually. Not equatorial, that's for sure. Okay, we have a periapsis of 13 kilometers. Could probably go a little bit higher than that. 26 kilometers. I think that's pretty good. Okay, let's go over to the moon with this. Oh, wait! Look, look, look! Stage recovered! We got the skipper stage back. That's incredible. Uh, it ended up pretty far away from the KSC, but we got 25,000 back for that. So, putting the parachutes on that was uh, worth it. We will keep that in mind. I mean, it looks like we've got a good, mostly recoverable... Well, look, we'll lose the poodle stage, obviously, because it's a transfer stage. And we'll lose the LV-99. Um, we'll lose the service module here eventually. But, uh, yeah, as far as the bottom part of it, that's pretty good, actually. Uh, that's pretty good. Interesting. And it could get uh, 16 tons to orbit, looks like, just about, uh, with some help from the Poodle. Uh, we would need the Poodle to finish things off, otherwise they'll probably go in too fast to be recovered by stage recovery. Okay, so on to the moon. Okay, now we have to figure out how to aim this so that we can hit our target. I think we have an extra stage here. I think somehow I misjudged how much I would need. I don't know. We'll see once we get into orbit. But looking at it, I mean, we're gonna have to eventually dump this stage as well. Pretty close to when we land though. I guess, I mean, to make an accurate landing at where Alton is, it's probably good to have all the fuel. Okay, that's a pretty tight orbit. 25 by 19.7. Okay, so now we have to wait. On, okay, uh, everything is completely in the dark because of the eclipse. We have to wait until Alton is under our orbit. Being under 25 kilometers might be a bad idea. just from a time warping standpoint. On the other hand, with the way our electric charge is diminishing, how about the eclipse is over? So we can recover that. Let's see, we'll... Okay, this is still in daylight, so once Alton gets over here, we should be able to land at his location. Okay, we're getting into phase with Alton's craft, but I just noticed here Life support status, out increment, EVA time expired. I, I hope that's not serious. Uh, will that mean that I can't move him to the craft? I mean, that would be a problem, right? Uh, I don't like that. And I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty close right there. Okay, so retrograde. We'll make the initial descent burn. Okay, there we go. It says the orbit does not re-enter, but uh, it just seems like it's crashing to me. Okay, we'll be really skirting the surface at certain points. Okay, now we have a projected landing spot. Which is where the poodle will land. Oops. Okay. And just verifying, we do have another stage to work with here, yes? Yep. Okay. So, separation. And ignition. Our target difference is going all over the place. There is the target. Uh, we better separate this stage while we're still 100 meters away from him, right? Yeah, hold on. 
Let me slow down a bit. Here, uh, let's get some more target difference there. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Okay, separate that stage a kilometer away from him. Sounds better. And... Uh, that's good. Now, back towards him. Oop. Hey, whoa. Very nimble. Uh-oh. Suicide burn countdown is negative? What? Uh... I did this too late? Shoot. I did not expect this. Yeah, it looks like I did the burn too late. Dang it! I'm going straight up because that's the only way I can save this at all, I think. Maybe, maybe I should go like this. Try and bounce a bit. We won't be going that fast. Well, okay, we're going pretty fast. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, we lost the engine. <laughs> well, that's not very helpful. We lost the engine. Uh, we're sort of sliding in a weird way. Um. Okay. Alton's craft is in a very interesting position. Oh, let me extend solar panels for the heck of it. But without the engine, this is no good at all. I didn't even put a ladder. I should have put a ladder. Is this supposed to happen with these landing struts? Maybe if I cycle SAS? Well, we're slowing down. Okay, yeah, I didn't realize I had so little thrust on the rear guard engine. I I failed to account for that. So, yeah, we really should have used the LV-99 to, like, start hovering and then lift the rear guard engine. And then not used it. I don't know. That was weird. Uh, Alton's craft is also weird. Alton's craft is a Beechcraft Bonanza cockpit, apparently, or something like that. Alton... Well, we can, uh, we can let you stay in the pod. Uh, uh, okay, here's Alton. Okay, well, uh, you can stay in the pod. That's probably better than just sitting out here or the craft that you had before. Look on the bright side, right? You'll have some supplies. And then we'll have to send something else. You've been very expensive, though. So next time, rather than simply rescue Alton Kerman, uh, we'll do something a little bit more complicated. I think we should look to building the base on the moon. I keep saying that, but uh, now I mean it. And I want uh, to send a caribou rover. I want to send a caribou rover. Okay, bored. Well... Alton is now safely in a completely useless pod. He's a scientist. So he is of. Well, I mean, he could probably plant a flag and do all those things. But we don't have a communication device on here either, so it's not like he could transmit it back. Um, we also don't haven't really done Kerbal inventory system or Kerbal attachment system. Uh, it's possible we could, like, send over an engine and attach it to this and have it actually be usable but I think we haven't unlocked the drill so we can't do that yet we would actually have to unlock the drill to do that anyway uh, maybe just get a crew report for now uh, I we can't yeah we can't transmit so just uh, just keep that okay I mean we have Kerbal inventory system we just don't have the drill all right so on this um, 
failure. We have to admit that it's, it's a failure. But we, we do have lots of funds to work with now, and uh, we can definitely save him. And let's take a look at where this is and whether we can set up a base here, shall we? Uh, so taking a look at Scansat. Well, I named it Alton 1. Uh, that was probably a premonition of mine that we would need an Alton 2. So our ore con concentration here is 6.46 which is pretty good. I mean, right over here in this crater here is 2.24, and it's worse in other craters. But here, 6.46 uh, is very nice. Now, how about the other resources? Let's say carbonite. 2.23% carbonite. S uh, not the greatest, I guess. Actually, I think that's about as good as you get on the moon here. Oh no, uh, here these brown patches are better. So this, this area here is 4.96. Our first moon landing there had practically nothing. Uh, down here in, this, uh, in the poles we have high concentrations. So there's a high concentration, 4.91. Seems to hover about 4.9 in certain locations and then there's 2.23 elsewhere and then these barren locations. So uh, here we happen to be in sort of the middle ground, so it's all right as far as carbonite. And just so that I know, uh, well, we, we, we haven't really scanned for water, have we? No. Um, what else could we possibly want? Dirt? How about dirt? I don't think there's much dirt on the moon. Not by what we mean, but I don't think I've scanned for dirt either. I think we've only scanned for ore and carbonite, so all right, maybe minerals? No. Okay, so yeah, at least ore and carbonite seem to be here in some some relative abundance. So may, yeah, maybe we'll just set up a base here. Let's think about that for the next episode, alright? So on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.